Hello and welcome back to another reno vlog. A bit of an update, we're just about to get started on the second phase of the reno, which is the kitchen and lounge. So excited, this has been such a long time coming. So um, in the next couple of weeks we're getting started covering this up, thank God. Um, ripping out a wall between the kitchen and lounge, replacing the ceiling, so we're back into all the fun stuff, which is gonna be really, really good. And hoping to have this whole phase finished in the next couple months, which will be amazing. So we've been really busy like picking out samples and colors and materials and all that kind of stuff. It's actually been way harder than I thought. I thought I had a really clear idea of what I wanted, but when it comes down to it, there's just so many options and things to choose from, and it's so hard to imagine it all coming together when the house is like totally unfinished. So yeah, it's been really stressful, but I'm sure that we've made good choices. I'm hoping everything's pretty much booked in now. All we have left to pick is our flooring, so we'll hopefully have that sorted in the next couple of weeks. So one of the biggest questions I get asked is how we're actually paying for our renovation. So how we're managing to save money to renovate and pay our mortgage and have a social life because obviously it can be quite hard to balance those things. And also renovating can just get so out of hand if you aren't careful. Like you could just spend thousands more than you need to. I am an absolute budget freak. Like I look at our budget every single day and I always make sure that I'm managing what we're spending on the renovation so that we just don't go overboard. So I just want to share a few of the ways that we're managing to do that. So one of the things I've been doing to save a bit of money is upcycling furniture. Basically, we finished half of our house now, so we finished the bedrooms, and all I want to do is buy new furniture for them and kit them out and make them look amazing, but I'm really struggling to balance paying for the new furniture as well as paying for the next stage of the renovation, which is definitely more important. So I decided to upcycle a couple of pieces, so I bought a couple of bedside tables off Trade Me for $30 each, and I basically just sanded them back, sanded all the varnish off, painted them, and I bought some new handles off Trade Me as well, and they ended up costing, I think, about $40 each all up. So these are them. They are obviously just white. They're in really, really good condition. So I, I feel like it was a very good score. They're on metal runners. So no matter how old they are, they're always going to be great. And yeah, just painted them white. I feel like they go perfectly with our room. And I painted them the same color as the walls so that they would kind of blend in and make the space feel a bit bigger. So what I want to do is recreate this on these drawers. So I've had these drawers, honestly, since I was like 12. Um, they are in absolute state right now. They were blue, but then in our last flat I had this idea to cover them. This stuff is basically like Duracell, but for furniture. Um, it looked good for about a month, and then it started all unsticking, so I literally attached duct tape to it, and then that didn't really work either. So they've looked crap ever since. I was planning on just getting rid of them, but then I was like, why, when I could upcycle them? So I'm going to take off the rose gold Duracell stuff and paint them white, and then I'm also going to get the same handles as I've got on the bedside table, so they match and look like a set. And here is the basically completed drawers. The only thing left is just a few more handles to put on, obviously. I just need to find a couple shorter screws, but they've turned out so, so well, and I feel like they look really, really good um, next to the bedside tables. They look like a matching set. So good and so cost effective. Excuse the fact that I am in absolute state right now. I've been painting all day, which kind of brings me to my next point about saving money, and especially when you're renovating. I think one of the biggest things is making sacrifices, and I guess this relates to any kind of saving, but we would love to be away right now. It's a long weekend. We would love to be at the beach or something, but instead we're literally working all weekend and getting things done on the house because it's kind of one of our only chances to have a solid few days in a row where we can actually do stuff. So we've definitely found that with saving money, you do have to make sacrifices quite a lot. Um, the other thing is doing as much as you can yourself as possible. So obviously this is um this is to a limit like i wouldn't recommend going and doing all your own electrical work or anything like that that's like dangerous but we do as much as we possibly can so we do all of the prep work that we can ourselves all of the sanding we always like remove our ceiling anything we can do for the builders to kind of lessen the amount of time that they need to be here um all the painting we do ourselves and the thing is if you don't know how to do something, YouTube it. Like, you'll be able to find a tutorial and you'll be able to keep your costs down by quite a lot. The boys have built all our fences um, and they look amazing. And again, like, they're not professional fences or anything. You don't need to be, but obviously you can look up how to do pretty much anything on the internet. So we've saved a lot of money by doing things ourselves and getting friends to come and help us out as well. I've recruited my dad a couple times to come and paint things for us and help us out with stuff around the house. So... That is definitely a really massive thing when you're trying to keep costs down when you're in a bed. Hi guys, welcome to vlog 3.7. Um, <laughs> it's currently 5.37, 38 seconds past 5 o'clock. And um, we're redoing this fence out here. If you would like to take a look, we've done shitloads of work already. It's been half an hour. Taking that out, no dramas. Um, Ryan Jones Electrical, big shout out. Um, <laughs> obviously for the hammer as well, the microphone. Yeah, 
thanks for coming guys, we'll be here um, for the rest of the night. So we'll check back in in about half an hour. Thanks for coming. I love how this whole video is just me sitting in different rooms of the house and giving TED Talks about saving money. But anyway, the next thing that I want to talk about is definitely the easiest way to save money and it's definitely not just people who are renovating either. This is for anyone who really wants to evaluate what they're spending. Um, and that is looking at your fixed expenses. So your power, your water, your internet, your phone bill, that kind of thing. The things that you have to spend money on, but you could be spending a really unnecessary amount on them. So what I do every three to six months is I always shop around for all of those things and see if there's a better deal that we could be on. Like, could we be on a better phone plan that's going to save us money? Could we be with a better power company? That kind of thing. So recently we did switch over to PowerShop. And just to be clear, this video is sponsored by PowerShop. So we switched over to them. I thought that we were on the best deal we could be on with our previous power company, but I was definitely wrong, like we've saved a lot of money switching over to PowerShop. Um, basically one of the main reasons that they are so amazing, well one, they guarantee you savings for the first year, so you send them in one of your old bills and they make sure that their rates are cheaper for the first year, which is a great incentive to switch over. But two is that they have an app, and so the app is absolutely amazing, if, especially if you're a budget freak like me, so I'll put it up on the screen. Basically what you do is you can log into the app and you can see your power bill, you can see your last month's power bill, you can see all of your projected power bills for the future, which is awesome. And then what you can do is you can actually purchase power in advance. So down the bottom there's these things called power packs. So basically what that is is just purchasing power in bulk. And you can either pay for it at the time of purchase or you can wait and pay with your monthly bill. And you can just put it on your credit card with the direct debit or basically whatever you want. Um, so what you do is you purchase power and the more purchase you power the more power you purchase in advance, it's such a tongue twister, the more money you will save. So that is a really, really amazing feature to PowerShop. Another really cool thing is that you can look every single day at what you're spending. And that for me is huge because it reminds me to turn lights off and it reminds me to be good with power because I can actually see like, oh, I left the, I left the lights on all night last night while I was asleep and yeah, it actually did cost me more money, that kind of thing. So it really keeps you accountable to not being really, really bad with your power. Um, and obviously the budget freaking me just loves knowing exactly what we're spending and when like that just, ugh, that is beautiful to me. So we've definitely saved a lot of money with them. And again, like just with all of your fixed services, things like your power and your internet and whatnot, definitely shop around and look for good deals because it may seem like a really small amount of money that you're saving when you look at it week to week or month to month, but you'd actually be really surprised at how much it adds up to long term. And obviously if you're working towards a goal, every little cent counts. Um, I only have two more tips, so I'm just gonna say them while I'm sitting here. Um, one of them is shopping around. So same kind of thing as when you're shopping around for you know power, internet, phone, that kind of thing is if you're shopping around for furniture or um, different reno stuff, so different services like trades, like builders and plumbers and that kind of thing, um, get lots of quotes, look around, make really informed decisions. Don't just say, okay, well, this person quoted me, um, you know, $1,000 to come and do something. That must be what it costs. Definitely get other opinions. Um, when it comes to furniture, like we really want to buy a couch at the moment, so we are looking at so many different places because once we know exactly what we want we can also look out for sales that come up and um, we can look around and see other places that compare and we won't end up spending money and then sort of walk into the next shop and thinking oh that couch is so much better and it's like two thousand dollars cheaper you know so always always shop around we have got such a good deal on our bench top literally because i've gone to like 10 different companies and got quotes on bench tops and i've compared you know all of the quality the service the prices um yeah i just shop around for everything just so we can make really informed decisions and the next tip is also just to be patient. And that is the one that I struggle with the most because I just want everything to be done now. And I get really fed up that, like having to wait for different things and having to wait for the kitchen to be done. So by the time our kitchen goes in, we will have been in our house for a year, which is definitely a lot longer than I would have wanted to have waited for a kitchen, um, just because I'm impatient. But again, just trust in your savings. If you're saving and you're doing all of the right things to be putting money aside, just trust that it will happen and be patient and it will all be so worth it. Um, and stop going out for brunch every Saturday. <laughs> that's the hardest one. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all of the tips that we have at the moment for saving money. Um, I say we, this vlog was pretty much just me. This is definitely my domain. Um, more than it is Riley's, he kind of does the work and I manage all of the savings. I'm like the little project manager accountant of our renter. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful if you're either, you know, planning on renovating or, um, just wanting to save some money, maybe get into a house or that kind of thing. So yeah, I hope you could take something from this and we'll see you in the next vlog where we are doing our whole lounge and kitchen. It is the most exciting stage of our reno. So we'll see you then.